have you noticed when you compare the work of different artists how one might appear flat and lifeless but the other has an attention grabbing presence the difference is usually due to the use of values and contrast so broaden the tonal range as far as you can in your drawings really strong darks offset and brighten the highlights your brightest whites we only have one white our paper so the only influence we can have on the contrast is to adjust the darks and blacks if the darkest value is dark grey you have to work between that grey and the white of your paper when the darkest value is near black you immediately have far more values available another third in this case and if you use contrast intelligently you can give the illusion of the paper actually being whiter than it is of course all this depends on strong dark values so let's have a look at ways of achieving that this is part of an offset litho print and the reason it looks grey and grainy is due to the offset litho's 80% black problem the system cannot produce solid blacks why because it uses a series of round dots to create the values and four round dots will always contain a white core our eyes see it as there being a 20% white content so it reads the overall black as a dark grey this is why newspaper photos always look grey and washed out and so will your shading if you leave any gaps or holes they will dilute lighten the dark value you intended strong and solid blacks and darks are important soft grades the bees are coarse and grainy and the flat graphite plates sit on top of the tooth leaving white pits the hard grades the H's contain more fine clay so it can get into those pits to achieve the best darks combine the two you'll have the dark value of the soft grade with the smoothness and solidity of the hard grade this technique is known as layering draw a box about three by two eight by five centimeters and make a mark one third down and another mark two thirds of the way down and begin shading at the top with your 4b using a flat face so the lines merge into each other and work horizontally so you only have to adjust the weight as you shade down to white at the one third mark there's no need to be tidy just shade use lots of weight to produce the black go over it a few times if it helps to eliminate the gaps up and or down and if you're trying to remove a gap don't look at your pencil look at the gap you'll just watch it disappear your concentration will be on the value of the gap and not what you're drawing now begin again right from the top and work your way down to the two-third mark using an HB but before you start look at the 4B black now as you begin to shade the HB over it have a look to see what effect it has the hard HB will break up the 4B grains work the 4B into the tooth and fill the holes in the tooth that will dilute the dark value and overall you'll smooth the 4B and make it more solid now working right from the top again use your 4H and gradually decrease the value to white at the base your top section will have a 4B, HB and 4H layers the mid section will have HB and 4H layers and the base will have only 4H notice that the 4H has very little effect in the top part but it will have smoothed the HB and made it more solid by filling in the pits in the tooth layering different grades gives you full control over the result it combats weak darts by removing the holes and gaps it increases the contrast so your drawing pops it has some real presence it darkens the value of the soft grades because it removes the holes that dilute its intensity and it smooths the finish of the hard grades you may have noticed in this exercise that the grades were progressively harder there's a good reason for that remember I explained that clay of the hard grades fills the tooth it's the tooth that scrapes the graphite off the pencil tip if it's full of clay there's little left to scrape off the grainy or soft grades also graphite is made up of flat plates and soft grades have bigger graphite content 
so the flatter plates can just skate over the surface and not be deposited. This is a horizontal layer of 6H with a vertical layer of 6B overlapping it, soft over hard. When the 6B met the 6H, there was nothing to grab hold of, so it just skated right over it. This is 6B with a horizontal band of HB layered over it, hard over soft. The hard HB found plenty of usable tooth within the soft 6B, which tends to sit on the top of the paper. And notice also how the HB has darkened the 6B by filling many of the holes. Bear that in mind, always hard over soft. Or you might have problems later if you wish to darken an area that you shaded with a hard grade. Now let's repeat the first exercise, but using more practical grades. As previously, draw a 3 by 2 box 8 by 5 centimetres. That's so you can see the whole box without having to shift your gaze. And again, we'll use hard grade over soft. Begin at the top with the 2B as dark as you can, then fade it to white about half of the way down. Now use your HB, start again right at the top and shade down about three quarters of the way. And as you do it, watch the effect it has on the 2B. Finally, starting again right at the top, use your 2H and shade almost down to the base. This is called burnishing. That's the polishing of the soft grades with the harder grades. Usually the best choice is to use two grades harder to burnish. So your 2H won't have had much effect on the 2B, but it will work its magic on the HB, in the same way that the HB worked its magic on the 2B. But never use hard grades with excessive weight. You will indent and will probably damage the paper. Any grade harder than 2H is best used likely. You can layer and burnish whenever you want to smooth a darker value or you want it to look more solid. Because it preserves the sharpness of your drawing it's particularly useful for foreground use and successive layers give really fine control. The alternative to layering is blending. First, blending is not a cure-all. It won't fix poor drawing and it's often overused. Blending will not be a shortcut, either as a way of filling areas quickly or using vague suggestion for something you don't understand. It won't fill gaps or holes in your shading. It will soften them, but they'll always be visible. Medium to hard blending can flatten the tooth and make additional drawing very difficult. It will smooth shading. This is its principal use, removing all signs of line. So for example, it's an excellent technique to use for skies and flawless skin. It will soften all sharp edges. And if you overuse it, it can turn your lively drawing into mud. And because it removes graphite, it will lighten darks. Logically, blending works best in mid-ground and the background areas where soft edges and lack of sharp detail are expected. Layering, however, is ideal in all situations, especially for foreground use, because layering will preserve sharp edges. All sharp edges remain sharp. That's essential in many situations, such as drawing hair or buildings. It will darken dark values by removing the white holes and gaps. As long as you follow the two grades harder advice, HB over 2B, for example, or 2H over HB, you should be able to use a softer grade again over the result. It will maintain the freshness and vitality of your drawing. It doesn't knock the life out of it the way that blending can. And it gives you fine control of the values, your 3D shaping and the overall appearance. Blending has many excellent uses, but think twice before you use it. Layering takes longer and requires more care, but the result is often well worth the effort. 
and burnishing is the ideal way to produce rich solid values. Finally, never be afraid to use intense darks. In a later video I'll show you how you can reverse them almost back to white. For more helpful drawing tips and tricks, subscribe to my channel and explore all the videos with me at drawwithmike.net. Mm -hmm.